DCL Access, and I am so, so excited to bring you guys this movie. What did you think? Pretty awesome, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna bring some of the cast and crew out. We're gonna do lots of questions, and then we'll have time for questions from you guys. It's gonna be great. So first, I'm going to bring out respected playwright, novelist, and screenwriter of Kill a Kill and Gorin Lagoon. Writer of the original Japanese screenplay of Batman Ninja, we got Kazuki Nakashima. <laughs> okay, up next, we have original writer and illustrator. Hello. <laughs> we have original writer and illustrator of Afro Samurai, created the avatar design for the Japanese Academy Award winning Summer Wars. Love that movie and also nominated for an Emmy Award for Best Long Animation on Afro Samurai Resurrection, we got character designer Bob Okazaki. Okay, up next, I created the opening animation from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and the opening animation for the video game series for Dragon Quest, director Yumei Mizuzaki.
going to have to just guess. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't appear. Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you very much. So when I was first presented with the idea of Ninja Batman, we of course wanted to bring Batman to Japan, so we needed to time slip him. <laughs> And Mr. Okazaki was the one in charge of, of course, the character design. I think that was very inspired. の、I just love Batman since childhood, and when I got this job, I mean, I just immediately started drawing. And everything, like, all the ideas just came flowing into my mind, and so I just put it out there, like, please, just let me do uh, like this. And just put it out there, so. Awesome. We better see some beautiful Japanese Batman characters cosplaying uh, this time next year, or a Comic Con. Come and show us your Batman ninja. Oh yeah. I want to see that Harley one. <laughs> and a bunch of monkey jeans. Yes! <laughs> no one is monkey jeans. Nobody go else is monkey jeans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got another question for the Batman, for the Japanese filmmakers. How did you guys set about meshing together sort of Western and Eastern flavors for Batman? Uh... So I think when you think of Japan, it's very easy to go to your go-to stereotypes. I mean, you got your samurai, you got your ninja, and you got gantai, which of course is code for transformation or combining. So we decided to put all those ingredients together in one place, and this is what we got. So I wasn't really caught up with the idea of West versus East and trying to match those. It was just like whatever came to me naturally. If Batman was a ninja, this is how it's gonna be. <laughs> あの、日本はおもてなしの国なので、えっと、So when we got the, um, the offer to uh, work on Batman Project, um, we as a Japanese company, we wanted to like um, incorporate a lot of um, Japanese anime tropes, I guess, um, into this show. So like often in Japanese anime, robot, giant robots fight each other. So we definitely wanted to put that in. And then <laughs> we also added like a lot of different other stuff that you might have noticed. And then, and then in the end, like they just returned to Batman was the whole point. Awesome. Thank you for reminding me about those mechs, man. Wow! When I saw those, I was like, what is happening? This is amazing. <laughs> but you guys have managed to pack in so many Batman characters. You've got Joker, Gorilla Grodd, a few Robins, also Catwoman. I want to know, what were some challenges?
challenges of putting that many characters in in one movie? So this man, I know, but New Hunting Gas or DC Universe no キャラクターを扱う機会が何だろうかわかんないのでできるだけたくさんの人たちを描いてみたいなと思って思いっきり詰め込みましたのでね。Uh, that was kind of like a, a wish list for me. You know, for a Japanese company, and took all these characters from the DC universe and wanted to see what would happen. そうですね。あの本当にこのお話にあれだけのキャラクターを詰め込むのは本当なんか島さん大変だったと思うんですけど、あのもうとにかく僕。は個人的にもう全部のキャラを描きたかったので、もうこんなチャンス二度とないかもしれないと思って、もう本当に本当はもっと描きたかったんですけど。<笑> so, uh, I know Nakashima-san worked really hard to get as many characters in the movie as much as possible. I mean, but personally, I mean, I wanted all the characters <laughs> if I could. But I mean, it was just, it was just such an honor to、uh, work on this、uh, on this piece. えー、と振り返ってみて、一緒に皆さんと一緒に見てみて、ちょっと外したのは、女性キャラクターが少なかったなと、<笑>だからこのゲストもみんな、男性だし、<笑>そこは花がなかったのは、あの次回作になるかもしれない。<laughs> Did each of you have a favorite character that you really enjoyed bringing to life? Oh, I have a Joker, isn't it? Joker, Harley Quinn, huh? Uh, for me, it's definitely a Joker. Joker and Harley Quinn. Yes. Just like, who are just to kill? Like, nah, 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 nah. Basically, we got a very, very rough translation of the Japanese dialogue, just like a list of lines, and then we got little sketches and little pictures and storyboards of stuff、um, on black and white, like sketches, and they were like, "Go, go do it," <laughs> and we're like, "Oh, okay."、Um, and, and what was interesting is that、uh, I think Warner Brothers really miraculously left、um, all the creatives alone, basically, in this process. And they really wanted the Japan team to make this authentically animated, and they sort of entrusted us to make it authentically Batman. So our job was really to go through and make sure the characters felt like what we understand as Batman characters, the Batman villains. And、uh, I'll just add that it's like you know, with any of these things, you're really approaching it as a collaboration. You know, with the the great part of it is that you know we get to work with these hundreds of people, amazing great artists, amazing great voice talent, and it's like everybody adds like a little different、uh, element to it. And so that translation 
was really just a, a lot of observation, a lot of seeing like, you know, how this is playing, looking at the acting that the artists were putting into the, uh, uh, into the characters, and, um, and really trying to draw out those essences um, as, we, as, we, as we wrote it. I'm very curious to see what the uh, fan reaction is going to be. Actually, I don't know what some of the fan reaction is going to be. But I watched the Japanese ver uh, sub version versus the English version because there are scenes and dialogue that is remarkably different, uh, mostly because uh, anime is primarily, as many people here know, a visual storytelling medium, and the visuals drive everything. And for us, I think, as Western audiences, um, we have a different storytelling tradition, and we want more narrative, sometimes character arcs and themes that are woven in. For instance, um, in the big fight with Batman and Joker, uh, in the Japanese version, they're talking about um, real estate and Japanese history during that part. Um, and some of those uh, jokes may not have translated into a Western version, and so we kind of felt like it was like one of the best sword fights we'd ever seen and wanted to make it much more badass between them. So it kind of gave it a slightly different flavor there. But some of the things we tried, to, and we, we kept it strictly Japanese, you know what I mean? Because we, we thought, I mean, the, uh, after the literal translation of it, because we felt that conveyed the essence of it, you know, much better. Yeah, like Bane, for instance, all those lines were left in Japanese. Yeah. So the, the picture was locked when you guys came in with the script, is that correct? Uh, no, no, when oh, we came in, no, it was very, very early in the process. Wow. And so it was, it was like a constant surprise as to what we were seeing. Like, we would just get little pieces of it. And we're like, oh my gosh, Gorilla Grodd is in this. Um, like, to me, he's more a Flash villain than a Batman villain, but it worked for the story, or, um, like, on our side, we discovered Bane was in it very, very near the end of the production process. <laughs> we didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, so, Eric, Liu, and Bob, you guys worked together before on Afro Samurai. Did that uh, lend any help working together on Batman Ninja? I think we're just super excited because, I mean, Bob's designs are amazing. They're amazing, you know, in Afro Samurai, and they're amazing in this. So, yeah, we just, we loved it. We actually heard about the project first. We were um, at this beer garden at uh, this place called The Grove in L.A. Uh, we get beer. That's and, The Grove, I guess. I know, right? And, uh, and we're like, drinking beer, and then we heard, Theo, Eric, Theo, Eric. And we're like, what? And we turn around, and Bob is like, standing there. And we're like, what are you doing in the United States? And he's like, Batman Ninja. Oh, great. <laughs> and then we're like, oh. <laughs> in the project. Um, but I will say, having worked with uh, Bob before, we know like some of the themes that are really incorporated into his design work. And like a lot of times in Bob's designs, like technology is bad and nature is good. And those are sort of themes that we try to tease out in the adaptation. And I think you see that throughout the film, um, where the Joker and Gorilla Grodd use all this technology and it isn't Batman until Batman returns to his natural self and his natural state that he's able to destroy them. And actually, Batman uses most of his tech very early in the movie. Wow. <laughs> I'm less afraid of Tony now that I've seen the yeah. joke. Uh, I'm like, okay, now I know where this guy's coming from. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. It was unbelievable visually. And I mean, it's classic uh, Batman buildings double crossing each other. And uh, yeah, uh, breathtaking. Good job, well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. really cool and yeah. unusual uh, homage. Of of elements and, and stuff that I like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, like as soon as Lone Wolf and Cub Comics hit the U.S., I was I was in on that, you know what I mean? I, that, that just hit me at the right age and the right uh, place and the right time. And I and I also I also love like samurai movies and spaghetti westerns or whatever, like uh, like uh, uh, hard boiled detective stories where you just there's a bunch of kind of factions fighting, you know, kind of competing against each other, and then you drop like an X Factor, like Batman in the middle, or Clint Eastwood's man with no name or something, and he just kind of gets everybody working against each other. I just love your uh, Jimbo's truck. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I just loved it from the get go. It was a little unusual in that the voices were already recorded, so we had to fit our voices into those existing uh, holes, uh, so to speak. Wow, that came out wrong. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, so there was a little bit of more Rubik's cube than we usually do, where the voices are done. First, and then the animation to the voices, but but uh, yeah, it was a really interesting process and cool project. Yeah, that, that, when I when I walked in to, to do it, the, the the first sound when they started showing me stuff was like this, because that was my jaw hitting the floor. <laughs> I was so happy, 
And it was so crazy and insane. And I said, you can't, the Warner Brothers DC can't possibly actually be letting you do this, right? <laughs> do they know that you're doing this? And they're like, yeah, no, they're pretty hands off. And then, uh, you know, and Eric walked into the room and, and I recognized Bob's stuff because uh, Bob and I worked together on uh, Afro Samurai. And, and again, he put me, well, he didn't have this, this wasn't his choice, but somehow I ended up in, as a character who covers his head in a giant mask. Again, um, but I, I was just—it was—it was so bad, and I couldn't. And the, you know, they said you can't talk about it um, for a while, and all I wanted to do was scream it from the rooftops that you guys are going to be so—it's—it's it's so insane. Yeah, I think it's completely similar to you. Walked in, similar sound, jaw dropping. I mean, firstly, so absolutely out to be part of any Batman project, and then I went in. They said, would you like to see some of the visuals? And I was like, would I? You know, and they switched it on. And I, uh, yeah, I was transported instantly. I got sort of a, a, chills. And, I, and I, I think I said to the guys, I said, I think this is an instant cult classic. I think this is, you know, it's, it's genius. And I'm, I'm delighted to be a part of it. Yeah, me too. I couldn't believe that I was asked to do this. Um, but you're, you're kidding me. And then seeing this, combination it was so immersive i can't believe the world the artwork that was there the character design and here we are going to do these add the voices as you say to the old and and no, I'm gonna, we're going to do these voices and then the facial expressions that were already there gave us so much as actors i couldn't believe it you know i mean i got so much out of that garuda just just the way his face was and i knew Oh, these people. <laughs> you know, and that was, that was already in the artwork, you know? Tan shores in the mist. <laughs> Monkeys in the house. <laughs> no, I, I was just blown, I was completely blown away. I thought it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh... I just, I was brought in, uh, I think maybe later, and um, I was just so happy for a gig. I thought it was just really fun to be the director, but honestly, so much of the work, these animators and directors and writers, they do so much work. I mean, that's stunning. And then we come in and just, I just acted insane and laughed a lot. But it was, um, it was really an honor, so I was really excited to be there. Very fun. For me, the, the absolute first thing I was impressed by was how believable Adam's accent was. It was <laughs> spot on. No? Tough crap. Tough crap. Took a lot of uh, No, visually, like honestly, when, when there were breaks in between like some of the recordings, it was like I, I just found myself like studying the screen because there's so much ornate detail. And when it comes out on May 8, plug, uh, you're going to want to pause it in so many moments and actually just take in all the detail that visually they managed to capture so that was it was just such a feast for the eyes it was like like here i am just went going you're gonna let me do this <laughs> roger you know you know it comes out on digital on april 24th on april 24th that, that man ninja april 24th a month from today thank you yuri yeah <laughs> we all just saw it live like, uh, how about that <laughs> blu-ray is in may right yeah. in yeah. may may 8th for the blu-ray and dvd by the way digital april 24th I, it ain't easy, yo. Um, I, I wish I could keep you guys here all day. We don't have a ton of time left, but I really, really want to know, um, for the filmmakers, I heard that there were some Easter eggs in this film, and maybe you guys can check it out when you watch it for a second time on May 8th or April 24th for digital streaming. Can you tell us a little bit of those Easter eggs? I hope they're tangled eggs. <laughs> So if you uh, look at uh, Two Faces coin that he flips, if you look at it frame by frame, you can tell that one side is American and one, the other side is um, ancient Japan's uh, currency. It's also Canadian. There's a Canadian coin. <laughs> yeah. And I have a question for Tony. I mean, the Joker has gone through just so many iterations. So many actors have stepped into it. And I just really want to know, how did you, what was your thought process stepping into this character? How did you make it your own? Good question. <laughs> um, 
I... I don't... <laughs> I, I knew someone was going to ask me that. You can, you can say it, Tony. It's okay. We're all friends here. I went to an insane asylum, and, uh, no, um, I, um, I don't know how, I don't know, I, there was, like, a lasciviousness to him that I was, it was really fun to play, and just, I, I knew that there was, a, obviously, a lot of very talented actors that, like, Mark Hamill, that did the Joker and stuff, and were so good, and you kind of go in going, and I, I don't want to match that brilliance, but you just, I just kind of acted insane, and I do a lot of awkward <laughs> characters, and, um, it's a forte of mine. Um, but yeah, it was, I don't know, I, I think we just kind of, and the, Eric and um, Leo were there, and Michael, the director. Yes. Just did a fantastic job guiding us, and it's a lot of screaming, um, <laughs> but it was, it was really fun, really fun. And it's so great to see it on the screen. This is my first time seeing it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. We actually had a nickname for Tony, and we called him Iron Throat in the recording oh. booth, because <laughs> there was so much screaming and laughter, and we just thought, how you did that for like eight hours a day. Yeah, not, not one laugh was the same, you know, like, I, yeah, it's not looped. Yeah. Wow. I'm just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have so much time left, but I would love to just go down the line and ask which one of you, uh, if you have a favorite scene in the movie that just stands out for you, either as actors or watching the movie, or creating it. Oh, uh, I love the, uh, the onsen scene and not in the hot tub, I think that's, it's awesome. Uh, the, the barrel of monkey scene where they start uh, piling up, and again any two V scene. <laughs> yeah. Well, Batman is the world's greatest detective, so my favorite scene I think is when Batman looks at that piece of paper at the beginning and says, "That's Japanese," <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> Damn, this guy's good. <laughs> There's a, there's a line where, at one point, where the, uh, I, th I think it's two faces, uh, a, a giant a robot, which, I mean, think about it, you know, half, you know, half of the world is watching Pacific Uprising, uh, Pacific Rim Uprising, and you guys get to see this. I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see it tomorrow, don't get me wrong, but, <laughs> um, I think they just stole their thunder. Um, but there, there's one, uh, one line when, uh, Red Hood says, that was cool. Yeah. And, and like that's, I was like, that's what we're all thinking right now. Yeah. I, I never thought I'd see this, and we get to see this. I didn't even know I wanted this. <laughs> now I can't live without it. I can't live without it. Um, I, I love just just the, the whole sort of the tonal change from when uh, Joker and, and, and Harley uh, sort of had lost their their minds and become sane again, and the whole aesthetic of that, that blazing sort of summer and the snake in the tree. I thought. That was just marvelous, so unexpected. As you say, anime, the visual, the, the visual melange, beautiful. I agree with that. I love seeing their relationship. There was just a certain kind of bizarre, wonderful love <laughs> that was wonderful, even when they were being deceptive. It was just great. I love that. Of course, I love the monkey scenes. Uh, just that <laughs> building up of the monkey is just, in, yeah, it's just incredible. And, um, gosh, there's too, 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 many, too many wonderful scenes. I just I loved it. I loved yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, the December are gonna rip. That fight between at the end. Right, quiet. quiet. Uh, no. <laughs> bad, bad joke. You guys had a scene when you fight at the end. I thought that was really amazing because it really showed who they were. I agree with your said what you said about it. when they uh, when he kind of they kind of turned to farmers. It kind of turned into almost like a, a painting the way it was done. I don't know if it's right, like a Degas painting. It was just really beautiful and abstract. I love that. It's really intense, guys. Just <laughs> give me that piece of information. My absolute, I laughed out loud the first time I saw it, which was two nights ago. Uh, Red Robin, Will Ferdell, correct? Like the right? Will? Yeah. Who can't be here. He sends his love. Uh, but Monkey G suddenly has a sister or a girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. or, and she just appears out of nowhere. And, was that? and Will just like, it is so quick, you gotta see it again. Will just, his character just goes, Who's she? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're all thinking! I literally busted out laughing. Who's she? And then they just keep going, like, okay, here we go. Tandem monkey food plate time. Great. It's the little things that I just like. And for our Japanese team, is there any scene that you guys have that you like, really loved and really stood out to you? I'm going to go to the 
常に不安だったんですけど、今日動けたんでほっとしました。So, I mean, I think we can all accept that robots can you know, combine and transform into a giant robot. But I was really worried about if you guys would be convinced with monkeys and bats kind of <laughs> robots. So, I was thinking about your reaction. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a lot of work with the game. バットマン、巨大バットマンのシーンがやっぱりすごい大好きですね。そう、そう、バット、but my favorite would have to be the Bob Kane version of Batman。Yes, yes. あの僕はあの結構前半のえっとあのバットボールのバットバットイン、バットイン、バットサイク。